Here is the sound sensor that we will be using for this lesson. A quick glance at the board shows that it consists of an electret style microphone, a trim pot, comparator IC, transistor, some resistors and capacitors. And it has three connections, plus five volt power, output, and ground. The schematic for the PCB of the sound sensor looks like this, with the audio input from the electret microphone going to one side of an LM393 comparator and the trim pot output going into the other side of that comparator. Here is an easier way to visualize what the sensor is doing. Audio input that looks like this is coming into one side of the comparator. The other side of the comparator has a trim pot that sets a threshold voltage value. Whenever that threshold is exceeded, the comparator outputs plus 5 volts, otherwise it outputs 0 volts. This means that the output looks like a nice on or off square wave that is very digital friendly. However, since the output digital pulses are not consistent in any way, we will need to use the microcontroller's interrupt to capture when an audio event has occurred. So let's move on to the theory section to see how we can build a system that uses this sensor to blink an LED a few times whenever sound is sensed. The hardware schematic for this lesson is rather simple because we are connecting two systems together and adding a single output LED. The schematic starts with the Arduino Nano and connects its plus 5 volt and ground lines to the breadboard's bus lines. Then we connect digital pin 2 to the output of the sound sensor. The sound sensor also connects to plus 5 volt and ground. And finally, digital pin 3 connects to a 470 ohm resistor and a red LED going to ground. The Arduino program for interfacing with the sound sensor looks like this, where first we define the LED output pin as digital pin 2 and the input pin as interrupt 0. Then we'll create an integer called blink LEDs, which the interrupt function will set when the LEDs should be blinked. This is set as volatile since the interrupt function can change its value. In the setup function, we set the LED pin as an output and we attach the input pin as a falling edge interrupt. That means that after the sound has finished, the blink interrupt routine will run. In the loop function, we will use an integer i with the for loop to quickly blink the LEDs five times whenever sound is detected. The 100 millisecond delay at the end of the loop function makes it so that the sensor is limited to being triggered 10 times per second. And lastly, we have the interrupt function. When the interrupt is triggered, it means that the sound sensor sends sound, so we want to set the blink LEDs integer to 1 so that the main loop will blink the LEDs. With the Arduino program complete, give it a compile and then upload it to the Arduino Nano. To build the circuit for this experiment, we'll need an Introduction to Sensors Components Kit a breadboard, and a jumper wire kit. The parts from the components kit that we will use are the Arduino Nano, the sound sensor board, a red LED, and a 470 ohm resistor. To build the circuit, place the Arduino Nano into the breadboard. Then connect the Arduino's plus 5 volt and ground connections to the breadboard bus lines. Next, we'll connect digital pin 3 to the 470 ohm resistor, which then connects to the red LED going to ground. And lastly, the sound sensor connects to digital pin 2, as well as plus 5 volt power and ground. With the circuit complete and the Arduino Nano programmed, let's power it on by connecting the USB cable. First I'll snap my fingers and clap my hands a few times to give you an idea of how sensitive the sensor can be. The LEDs consistently blink, even at the slightest bit of sound. And if we turn on some music, the sensor goes crazy because it is continuously detecting sound.
And here you can see, even a small tap on the table creates enough sound for the sensor to be triggered. In the real world, microphones are the ultimate sound sensor, and they are nothing new to the world. We have been recording audio and talking into phones for many decades now, but sound sensors still have their place, both in security systems and in artwork like this. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Next time in Lesson 7, we will be looking further into proximity sensing with the ultrasonic proximity sensor, which can tell you if an object is in front of the sensor and how far away that object is from the sensor.